Hello, this is Mike, and this is video 18 on PHP programming. And today we're going to learn about switch case and the random method. And many times when you're working with uh, else if statements, you don't want to stack up a lot of else ifs. And the best way to do that, the most efficient way to work with uh, selecting from a list, is using a switch case. And also, when you're working with games, you want to randomize things. When a bullet comes and goes somewhere, you don't want it to always shoot or blow up in the same place. And you'll use a random method to choose different coordinates, for example. So let's first of all take a look at the random method. Of course, the best way to learn about these methods is to go to php.net. And let's go there and take a look at the random method itself. So in order to find out more about the random method, just go ahead and type random in the PHP search bar. Click on that and it'll bring you to the following page. And there's two methods here, and they're integers. And the one method just uh, gives you a output between 0 and uh, 32,768. And the second one allows you just basically to put in uh, a min and a max. And I like that one the most, believe it or not. You can go ahead and scroll down and look at some code examples and actually run those in your own PHP. Let's take a look at the code that I have for you today. So I'm in Eclipse, and this is lesson 18. So come along here and click on 18 to make sure it's highlighted, and let's go ahead and make sure it's selected. So go to Run Configurations, Browse to 18, I'm there right now, and hit Run. And hit Yes. And I actually have two methods. The first method we talked about, which is generating a number between 0 and 32,768, and between 5 and 15. Let's see how those methods are created. So all I do basically is I hit a random number, which will just generate that method, or I put a random uh, with some min and max numbers. This is extremely useful. I'm always needing to pull random numbers between two variables. Now I actually want to show you how to use this in a switch case. So what is a switch case? So I have some code just below this. I'm going to go ahead and comment out this code. So you hit your uh, control shift C to comment it out. Let's highlight this commented code and uncomment it. So I'm going to come along here and just highlight all of that and just uncomment, control shift she uncomments. And I'm looking at my else if statement. Now I just want to make a statement about else if statements, and you're going to see this every once in a while in code. Let's, let's just take this first statement. And I'm going to copy it and pull it away from the rest of the code so I can make this comment. Sometimes when you get an else if statement, what you're going to see is no curly brackets following a single if. If you see that, basically what that is is an expression that's going to look and see if that's true or not, and if it is, it's immediately going to execute the code after that. But if you have more than one statement, you need to use the curly brackets. And what the curly brackets does is it groups all your code together. So just remember that every once in a while you're going to come along and see if statements that don't have a curly bracket, that just means it's going to exit the code immediately following it if it's true. Uh, I always use curly brackets if I have one statement or not, just to keep everything logical and more human readable. So in this code you see our standard if statement, and we have an else if and another else if, and you can stack up else if statements all day long. I could actually come along here and just start stacking them, hit my control. Alt and just start stacking as many else if statements and changing these numbers to different conditions 3, 4, and onward. But you know, that is not efficient. That is not the way you want to do it. So let me control Z that. So we're back to where we were. What you want to do is not stack up else if statements. And I tell you, I use else if statements every once in a while, but I never stack them. I never cascade them. What I use is when I need to start cascading, I'll use a switch statement. Switch statement is a beautiful statement if you do a lot of gaming uh, or a lot of web work where you're doing complex things. Switch case is going to be your best uh, friend. And what it does, it starts with a switch and with a variable. And whatever that variable is, it's going to choose the case that you want to go to. So you have a case statement which says, is that i equal to 0, is that i equal to 1, or is that i equal to 2? And if it is, take me to that particular one and execute it. Now once you execute that statement, you don't want to continue going down your switch case. So you have this break command right here that basically once you execute that command, pops you right out of the switch case and you continue with your code. So that's how easy a switch case is to execute. Now let's use our random variable with that. So what I'm saying is as opposed to using all these is else so what I'm saying is as opposed to using all these else if statements, use a switch. So we no longer need this. They'll both give us the same thing. But now let's take a look at our switch case. And what I want to do now is use my random variable in conjunction with my switch case. Now here I'm loading i as my variable. So if I run this and i is equal to 2, it should say echo i equals 2. Let's run it and see that's indeed what we get. And there you go, echo i, 
i equals 2. Let's go back and let's use the random method now. And what I'm going to do is just set this to random. I just call how that code looks. It actually just used rand. But I want to set it equal to so a min and max value. And see my values in this particular switch can be 0, 1, or 2. So let's use a, a minimum of 0 and a, a max of 2. And let's just run this method. Let's get it right. There we go. And let's run it. And now it randomly shows that one. Let's come over here. There's a little green arrow right here. You can click that again and run the program again. And now you see now it's starting to change values because it's randomly selecting one, zero, one, or two. So as it randomly goes through, it selects different values. And so that's how you would use a randomizer with a switch case. So you imagine if you're working with a game, you actually might have want a different environment each time you go into a particular room. Or when you turn on a web page, you may want a different image in the background. So you can actually use your switch case in conjunction with your random variable and choose a different environment every time you move into a web page. Well, I, you know, you can use switch cases with not just numbers, but you can also use um, string. So let's take a look at a string uh, switch case. I'm going to go ahead and comment out this code. So let's comment out this code. Control Shift C and go down. And let's uh, go ahead and make this code uh, visible. Control Shift C. And now what I want to do is I'm going to set my variable to apple. So if for example I uh, have an apple, let's say i is equal to apple or bar, i equals to bar or cake, i is equal to, uh, to cake. So if I run this, I should get uh, i is equal to apple because I've set my variable i to apple. So let's run it. And indeed I get apple. Now let's use our randomizer. So let's go back. So in this particular example, I only have one choice and that is to get a cake. But I'd like to randomize this. When I walk in the restaurant, I randomly have a different uh, dessert uh, for myself every time I want to eat. So what I'm going to do is actually create an array. And we'll call this array my choice. And I'm going to put all those particular uh, delicious items in that array. So we'll just go array, parenthesis here, and start putting in delicious items. Go ahead and copy and pasting those. Control C and Control V. And once again, you see me uh, copying, pasting variables because I make mistakes typing, and I really hate that, trying to figure out. And now we have Apple in there, and let's close that up. Good. And uh, that will basically put all that in an array, and now let me randomize that array. And so I still have my i variable here. Let's keep that, and we'll just take my array right here. We'll copy that. We'll paste that in. And we'll put our square brackets and put a randomizer in there. And we have choices 0, 1, and 2 because that's the numbers in the array. 0, 1, and 2. Let's just put that in my random variable, random uh, 0 to 2. And now when I run this uh, particular application, what it should do is randomize uh, the choice in the array. So I'm choosing either any three of these. And then it sticks that into the switch case i variable and selects the one that's been randomized. And now when I walk into my restaurant, I'll have a random choice of desserts each time I go in there. Let's run this and see if it works. So remember to run, just hit this green arrow and let's run it and it'll save for you automatically. That's great. So I got a bar, but I can hit this green and see if it randomizes. I got the apple the next day. Hmm, cake. Yeah, that's good. Bar again and apple and cake and bar and apple and cake. And bar, so there it is randomizing to different values. So there you go, that's great. And it's working fine. Now there's one more command that you can use, and that is actually shuffle as opposed to uh, just randomize. And shuffle will actually uh, shuffle the values as well. And you use that when you're playing with card games. So I'm actually going to treat that in another video, but I just want to make mention of that. So thanks for listening. Let's go ahead and cover real quick what we went through. Today we took a look at creating random numbers and how to do it using a max and min, which is my preference. And then we also, let me uncomment this code. And then we looked at how to take an if, else, if, else statement and turn it into a switch case. And finally we learned how to randomize a switch case using strings and arrays to create yummy choices. Now I want to make one more comment about the switch case statement. As we have it now, it's not quite right. I mean, even though we know what our input's going to be, that sometimes in games or events or in data, you don't know what your input's going to be. Sometimes it's not in your range, it's not in your switch case, and you can get an error. If you send some data in here, it doesn't know what it is, you're going to get an error. So the way to deal with that, you have, so you have to put one more code section in the bottom of your switch case. Let me go ahead and paste that in. 
and that's the default state. So basically, if you're out of range, uh, it's going to sense that and just send a little trace out out of range and then break it so you won't have an error. So it's important that you have a complete switch case statement, not just the cases in there, but also something that allows you to deal with data that's out of range. And so that's the complete switch case method. So thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively. We're going to visit switch case again often because we'll use it to build some pretty dynamic programs, specifically when we start talking about games. All right, see you next time.